Good morning. Please join me in reading the words of praise found in your bulletin or on your screen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Let us open our hearts to God this morning with the opening prayer found on your screen. Gracious God, we have doubted, even after having seen your mighty works in us and around us. We have doubted your promise never to leave us or forsake us, and have dwelt anxiously on things that worry us, rather than trusting your promise to work all things for good. By your spirit, grant us faith that we may demonstrate our trust in you by being at peace, even when the world is in turmoil. To the glory of God, our heavenly Father, who gathers us as a mother with everlasting arms of love. Now let us pray together in silence. Thank you. 
Friends, the good news is that because of God's unending grace and because of Christ's unfailing love, we are forgiven time and time again. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Please greet those around you with the peace of Christ or by commenting on the screen at this time. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Let us listen for God's holy word. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all the people into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea in the west, shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, Pass through the camp and command the people, Prepare your provisions, for in three days you are to cross over the Jordan, to go in to take possession of the land that the Lord your God gives you to possess. Sisters and brothers, this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Smile, though your heart is aching, 
Thank you to Lizzie and to Greg for that beautiful music. To Dick Page, who has supported his family being involved with Valley Community over the years. Thank you, Dick. To Amy, serving as our liturgist this morning. Uh, to Bob and Luke as our musicians for the rest of the service. For Dan and Steve and Roger uh, leading the sound and video this morning. It's great to have a team effort here once again. It is surely impossible without it. Thank you all. Last week, we started a new sermon series called A New Normal uh, as we looked at the story of Adam and Eve being expelled from the Garden of Eden and we, and we were reminded of God's calling for us to be able to confront, to adapt, and then to thrive within the new normal that is presented to us as human beings, as God's children. This week, I'd like to continue along that storyline a little bit. This time, uh, we heard references to the story of Moses and the Exodus story, but I'd like to focus on the story of Joshua as I've been thinking about this theme of leadership in times of a new normal and what that looks like uh, today as we celebrate and as we nominate and elect church officers, as we are confronted constantly with images and comments about leadership in the nation and the world today, and as we think personally about how we're each individually being called to lead in our individual lives. According to an article by uh, Harvard Business School, there are five characteristics of what they call courageous leadership. Number one, authenticity. Number two, Resilience. Number three, emotional intelligence. Number four, self discipline. And number five, a commitment to purpose. So I ask you are you a courageous leader? Now, according to the Harvest Business School professor, Nancy Cohen, she says this, a courageous leader is an individual who's capable of making themselves better and stronger when the stakes are high and circumstances turn against that person. Most of our lives were beset by crises. Courageous leaders are not cowed or intimidated. They realize that in the midst of turbulence, there lies an extraordinary opportunity to grow and rise. Again, those words from Harvard Business School professor Nancy Cohen. Who is a courageous leader in your life? Where do we see such leaders in the world today? As I said, I've been thinking a lot about this notion of leadership in times like these, as the world is distanced, as conflict and anger seem to be at a boiling point, as businesses, schools, churches, and individuals are all attempting to discern a most uncertain future. Are we all called to be leaders at this time? Or are some of us meant to be really good followers? Are the leaders we read about or watch on television realistic portrayals of the world of, that the world needs to uh, receive these days? Do the leaders we do see in the headlines, are they getting a fair shake? Or is the public too anxious to judge and condemn from the safety of their smartphones and Twitter accounts? I laugh when reading the cover page of one of my teenage diaries, which you should be able to see on your screens at this time. It's entitled, The Random Memoirs of a Leader. And I wrote that back in, I think, 1997, so I was a teenager. For some reason, I got this in my head that I was destined for leadership in this world. I took steps to begin to live into this idea of what a leader looked like, or at least as best I could imagine from what I've been learning. I joined the student council. I was involved in all sorts of school groups. I took advantage of special camps and retreats. 
I worked, worked, worked to become financially independent, educated, a pastor of a church. But I'll also confess to you that the more life I experience in this world, the more I realize that my previous concept, and perhaps much of the world's concept of what leadership should be, is simply misguided. In fact, looking back on things, most days I felt miserable living into this preconceived notion of what a leader should look like that I had formulated for myself over these years. I don't always feel like a leader. And on days I do, I confess to you that I don't always feel like I'm leading very well, especially in today's circumstances. Our leaders naturally created like my teenage self thought? Or are they somehow developed, nurtured, and made? What does leadership look like in the year 2020? As we embrace this new normal, should our concept of leadership be evolving with the evolution of daily living? Or should we hold fast to what has gotten us here in the first place? And what does our faith tradition tell us about leadership? Would the forefathers of Presbyterianism be considered leaders today? Or bigots? Would Jesus be celebrated as a great leader if he found himself walking the streets of Portland in the year 2020? Would he be heralded as a savior or a villain? Would we follow him if we heard his message spoken to us today on the streets or perhaps tweeted out? Or would his message be swallowed up by the countless competing interests, marketing groups, and agendas being produced every minute? As we wrestle with this new normal, let's take a moment to reflect on Scripture with the lesser-known story of Joshua as we reflect upon our concepts of leadership And perhaps as we listen for our own calling to leadership in the world today. And so we read today from the opening chapter of this book of Joshua. Now as I mentioned previously, there are numerous stories that speak to our theme of a new normal throughout Scripture. And I was actually going to be spending more time with the Exodus story of Moses. But Joshua is a figure that is often overlooked in the wake of the greatness of the Moses narrative. And yet, in a way, Joshua's story really is a new normal in the wake of Moses' story that perhaps we can relate with. Joshua was an assistant to Moses in the wilderness. And if we recount the ending of the life of Moses, God told Moses that it would be Joshua who would take the Israelites into the promised land. And it's there that Moses' narrative ends And Joshua's story takes center stage. We pick up with chapter 1, verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you as I promised Also to Moses, from the wilderness and Lebanon, as far great as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. I wonder what was going through Joshua's head at this time as he was hearing these words uttered. There he was, a lifelong assistant, a servant of Moses. And now it is he who God is speaking with. 
Joshua is simultaneously trying to process the emotions of losing a beloved teacher, coming upon what seems like an insurmountable military challenge up ahead, leading a mass of anxious Israelites, and oh yeah, serving as God's messenger for all of this. Not only that, but God has very Big visions for what Joshua has in store and the people of Israel. They shall cross the river Jordan, reminiscent of the crossing of the Red Sea we read about in the Exodus story, and fulfill God's plan for the Israelites to live in the promised land. There he was on the edge of the wilderness, literally able to see the land which Moses spoke of for over 40 years. And now the time had come to realize their destiny. God has only one stipulation, which will have reverberated for the entirety of the Old Testament text. It's the importance of God's law. We begin again, verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful Wherever you go, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. And then God shares with Joshua the words, perhaps he was in need of hearing. As God says, do not be afraid. Verse 9, I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And then Joshua commanded the officers of the people. And he said, pass through the camp and command the people. Prepare your provisions, for in three days you are to cross over the Jordan to go in to take possession of the land that the Lord your God gives you to possess. I'm not sure about you, but I'm not sure if I'd be up to take on that task that Joshua did that day. The good news is that we're all called to be courageous leaders in the name of Jesus Christ. However, we're not all called to lead in the same particular way or even at the same particular time. If we reflect upon the larger reading of Joshua, we take note of a variety of people who helped shape who Joshua was to become and who helped the people of Israel realize their larger calling. We're reminded of people like Moses who helped shape and develop Joshua for his leadership of the Israelites, of the fearless spies who would go into Jericho, and an equally fearless Rahab who would protect them in their mission. The priests of the 12 tribes who would help lead the people across the river crossing and later retrieve 12 stones to commemorate this holy occasion. And God would be the inspiration behind it all, at times leading some from the front and at other times ushering others from behind. God's message was for Joshua in this particular place and time, but we can all take this message of heart today Be strong and be courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord God is with us wherever you go. And we all have such opportunities to lead in our daily lives. Some of us may lead from the workplace. Others may lead at home. Students may lead from the classroom. Some of us will lead in social action and justice. Some of us may be called to serve in leadership within the church, as we are witnessing to this morning as with the election of our deacons and elders. Still, some of us will lead in our own simple living, our lives serving as an example for others and how to live gracefully and with faith. So where and how is God calling you to be a courageous leader today? 
We may not all feel like we're being called to be courageous leaders, like those we read about in books or watch on TV. But we all lead in unique, personal ways. And today we celebrate that which God calls us, to be courageous, especially in such times. For God has a marvelous future in story for this world, for Valley Community, and for you, and for me. And so today, we say thanks be to God, who is with us wherever we may go. Amen. Please join me in affirming our faith together as one community of faith. I believe that the church is the secure home for the foreigner and for all believers who constitute it, who speak the same language and have the same purpose. I believe that the communion of the saints begins when we accept the diversity of the saints. I believe in the forgiveness of sin, which makes us all equal and in reconciliation, which identifies us more than does race, language, or nationality. I believe that in the resurrection, God will unite us as one people in which all are distinct and all are alike at the same time. Beyond this world, I believe in life eternal in which no one will be an immigrant, but all will be citizens of God's kingdom, which will never end. Amen. We turn now to a time of prayer. Let us pray. Most holy and loving God, we are so thankful for your 
calling us each by name, for claiming us as your children, and for calling us as this valley community. So we offer our prayers together for this world. May we listen for your voice. Lord, we pray for this creation in a time of natural uncertainty, as a time of rising temperatures, of environmental catastrophes, of natural disasters, of vulnerable species. We are reminded of our call to be stewards. And so we seek your strength in leadership of being good stewards of this natural world. We pray for those peoples, communities, nations, families that are the most vulnerable of this world, Lord. For those who daily struggle to survive with adequate food and shelter, with clean water and safety. Lord, we ask that as we are called to lead as ambassadors of peace, that we may never forget those most vulnerable. We pray for a world suffering, afraid, confronting this pandemic, confronting disease. Lord, we ask that as we are called to be leaders, you may give us the peace of mind to lead without anxiety, the certainty to follow you in our paths, the patience to take one small step in front of the other, and for hope in your ultimate good work in this world. We pray for this nation and this community here in Portland, even in the midst of uncertainty of evening gatherings and public protests and rising numbers of homelessness and economic and food disparities, Lord, we ask for your presence. We pray that as leaders of our communities, of our streets, of our neighborhoods, of the city, that we may have your heart and have your will and your agenda on the forefront of our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. And we pray for this valley community, for those listed on our prayer list, for those names listed online, for our church members, our family members, and our friends who are silently lifted up at this time in our thoughts and in our prayers. And for ourselves, Lord, we ask your grace and your mercy to be manifest in our daily living. God, bring peace to this world. As we pray the words your son taught us to say in the language or form most familiar to us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, friends, we have an opportunity within this worship service and within our daily living of responding to God's message of hope and love and grace in our lives through our offerings of our time, our talents, and our monies. So you can do so in a variety of ways. You can do so online through valleycommunity.org, and there are menu options for um, various gifts and funds that you can help contribute towards. You can also continue to uh, mail in your offerings to the church office, and they'll be processed as received. And also, this is a wonderful time for us to think about how God is calling us to lead in this life of faith as we are called as God's children. 
And so perhaps it is through our time and our talents as well, as we share God's love with the world, let us receive this morning's offering with joy. Most holy and loving God, we give you thanks this day for the opportunity to serve as your children, as the opportunity to be your hands and feet. And so we ask that these offerings of our time, our talents, and our monies be received by you, be blessed by you, and be exponentially realized here on this earth as well as in your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
friends, a reminder that all are invited to the congregational meeting, which will be happening directly following this worship service through the Zoom link provided. It should be in the comments section of the feed right now. Or if you can't find it there, you can certainly find it on the e-blast, which uh, go out on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, if you have any questions about how to operate that, the easiest thing is to contact some other church members or to simply click on that link and see uh, what happens. The instructions will be provided for the, the voting process and all that once we get into the meeting. So just a few moments, once we get everyone over there, we'll, we'll be joining together for that meeting. Now also, hear these words of charge and benediction. These words from the God of Joshua, the God of Valley Community. God says, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.